going on guys? Today I want to talk about one of the most slept on quality of life features that a lot of node developers aren't taking advantage of and that's PNPM. PNPM or Performant NPM is another package manager that you can use that is way faster and creates much smaller node modules files. So I kind of want to show you how it works, how to use it, and how to convert your existing NPM projects into PNPM projects. And it is really, really easy. So to get started, I've created these two identical projects. I just did the basic V creation, and on the left here, I have an NPM project. So I did NPM create V, blah, blah, blah. Over here, I did the same thing, but with PNPM, and you'll notice that these are structurally the same, except for one key difference, and that difference is this has a package lock.json, this has a PNPM lock.yaml. So that's really the only difference that you'll see on the outside, but the big difference shows up in node modules. So to start, all we have to do is install our packages. On the npm side, it's just npmi as you're used to. And then on the pnpm side, it's pnpmi, very similar. Except what you're gonna notice here is right here we're saying resolved 108, so it's getting 108 packages, and it's reusing 86 of these. This is the sort of unique advantage of pnpm and the reason why it's considered the performant npm alternative. So when we open up our node modules directory, on the left here inside of the NPM, we see this massive, massive thing filled with all these different packages and every single one of these has all the code it needs, but said code could be duplicated. Now, when we go into our node modules directory of the PNPM, you'll notice it is much, much smaller. But then when we open this PNPM directory, yeah, it's a lot bigger. But what's unique about this is that PNPM takes advantage of something called symlinking. If we go to PNPM's website and you look at their motivation page, right down here they have this excellent diagram which will detail exactly what it does under the hood and the reason why you should be using it. So what these little lines that it's drawing are is these are symlinks. These are effectively just pointers, if you want to think of them that way, to a package at a different place so that whenever it goes to use bar inside of this node modules, it will be it'll go to this bar up here or vice versa. So what you're looking at here is a package with a lot of duplication. So we have this bar 1.0 up here, we have this bar 1.0 down here, and in an NPM world, those would both be installed, it would be copied. So we would install bar up here, we'd install bar down here, and we would have to save all that extra space, we'd have to deal with that extra install time, versus with PNPM, it's smart enough to say, hey, I already have bar up here. I'm just going to point it down here, and I'm going to now just use the bar down here. I'm not sure which direction it is. For the sake of this example, it really doesn't matter because you don't need to worry about that. All you need to worry about is the fact that your uh, node modules file is going to get a lot smaller. So instead of having to have bar everywhere, you just have it in one place. So at the end of the day, that's the benefit. It's smaller node modules and it's faster installs. But those two things really stack up in big projects because when you get to these projects where your dependencies array is dozens of entries long, your dev dependencies is a dozen entries long, and your node modules gets up to like a gig, it really sucks to have to download everything over and over again. So whenever you go to work on a different machine or switch to a different branch, you have to reinstall all of those modules and it can take surprisingly long. I've had node modules take a minute or two to build and that gets really really irritating versus pnpm that never happens because it's well performing npm everything is not duplicated and i guess the last thing i want to show you is just how to actually use these so we go in here and if we want to actually use npm we would just do npm run dev same as you normally would the only difference with pnpm is you just do pnpm dev and then it does the exact same thing. If you want to see the full one-to-one -one list, they have that up on the PNPM docs. I'll link them below, and you can check that out for yourself. So the question with PNPM then becomes, how do I convert my old NPM projects to PNPM projects? Because if we look, these aren't identical. We have a PNPM lock, and we have a package lock.json. Well, the simplest way to do it is to just delete them. So all we have to do over here to convert this NPM project into a PNPM project, so we're just going to delete this package lock, and then we do have to delete the node modules. So the node modules is organized differently for each of them. So here we just go in here, we're gonna delete this. And now we just need to do PNPM I. And suddenly this is going to become a PNPM project. So all of our node modules are being handled by PNPM. Our installs will be faster, our ads will be faster. Life is good.